Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Right, the 2014 sample paper, question 4b. Again, I just have a note there, the, the part A of this one happened to be a simultaneous equation as well. But, but question 4b said the following. The graphs of the function f of x is the modulus of x minus 3 and g of x is 2 are shown in the diagram. Okay. Now, when you've algebra done, um, <clears throat> you may not have functions done. So it might be quite difficult to, I suppose, map these onto the, which function is which. So just explain a little bit about, about the, um, the, the, the functions. G of X here um, maps onto two. So that is the same as writing um, Y is equal to two. Okay, a function F of X, G of X, whatever we want to call it is always Y. Um, and maps onto two is the same as is equals to two, okay? So this graph here, this line here is just telling you that it is G of X, okay? That's how I know it's this one, that's one clue, but it's a flat line at Y equals to two, okay? So I know that that point there on the Y axis, for example, is the number two, okay? And it's a flat line that goes on forever. That's why no X appears in it because X obviously changes but why doesn't? So the easiest way to explain that, that function is y is equal to two. Okay, then we look at the other function, which is f of x, which is this one here. Okay, and it's, it's x minus three. Okay, so if I'm going to take f of x being equal to just normal um, x minus three. Okay, well, what would that be? Well. If you remember from, from junior cert functions or any functions, if I was to plot it, okay, and then that would be my y value, I'd have naught minus three here being minus three, one minus three here being minus two, um, two minus three here being minus one. Of course, and when I put in three, I'm going to get zero, okay, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if I plot the line x minus three, will it then at zero? I'm going to be down here somewhere at minus three. If I'm looking at one, I'm going to come up from a line like such. Okay, so what you'll end up getting, um, or what I'm trying to show you, um, is that that would have been the line x minus three. Okay, and of course that, that should be a straight line, but you know my drawing, okay? Um, that would have been the old traditional, just a linear equation, x minus three. So what does a modulus do to it then when you, when you graph it? Because this is the modulus of x minus three. So remember the modulus just ignores the sign and takes the positive number, okay? So this minus three here, if I plot the modulus of y, okay, which is x minus three, this would have been three, this would have been two, this would have been one zero, okay? And now you can see why I didn't bother doing the positive numbers because they would have been the same. So you see this uh, minus three value down here, this maps up here to plus three. And this minus two that's here maps up to two and one to one, and then zero is the turning point. Okay, and then there's normal one, normal two, normal three. So when you see a V function like this, chances are you're looking at a modulus function. Okay, so just a little bit of background to how, um, how you would go about plotting um, a modulus function. Now you didn't need to know that specifically for this question. I suppose it just makes it easier to see what is happening. Okay, so Let's do the question. The graphs of the function f of, x, f of x is the modulus of x minus three and g of x are two are shown in the diagram. Find the coordinates of the points a, b, c, and d. Okay, so you have two graphs and you have two intersection points, a and b. Okay, so to find the points of intersections, we use simultaneous equations or it's where one function equals the other. Okay, that's how you would find points of intersections between graphs. Okay, so now let me have a look at this and see which ones are the easiest ones to figure out first. 
Well, maybe let's do those points of intersection. Okay, um, so where is the modulus of x minus three equal to two? Okay, and maybe I'll put in a line before that just to help explain it. Where is f of x equal to g of x? Okay, so this is how I find the points A and B. The two points of intersection here and here. It's where is the where is this graph equal to this graph? Okay, and then so that what I'm saying is where is the modulus of x minus three equal to two? Okay, now if it's okay with you, I'm going to come over here and give us a little bit more room to work this out. Okay, so from previous work, you'll know I could square both sides or I could say, well, where is x minus three equal to plus two or where is x minus three equal to minus two? Okay, and let's solve them. Um, x minus three equal to two, bring this over, x is equal to two plus three or x is equal to five. Let's solve this one. X is equal to minus two plus three. X is equal to one. Okay, so I'm getting X values of one and five for those points A and B. Okay, so then from your knowledge of coordinate geometry, you know he's got to be one and he's got to be five. Okay, so for my A and B, you've got to be a one and B has got to be a five. Okay, so there's your X coordinates. Your Y coordinates is easy enough once you understand what that function means because you know he's at two. So both of these are at two. Okay, so that's point A and point B figured out. Okay. Okay. Let's figure out um, C and D. So when I look at D, for example, it doesn't really matter, we'll do C first, I suppose it comes first. Um, I know that the X coordinate for C is zero because it's on the X, uh, I did that backwards. I know the Y coordinate for C is zero because it's on the X axis, okay? So in other words, I've gone over a length on X, but I haven't gone anywhere on Y, so Y is zero. And in the same way on the Y axis, I know that the X coordinate is zero because again, I haven't gone over or back on the Y axis. Um, so my X coordinate for D is zero. Okay, so C, we know that Y is zero, okay? And I would always write down at the X axis, Y is zero anyway. That's how I find um, how to, where a line crosses over the X axis, okay? So basically what I'm saying is, where is X minus three equal to zero? Okay, so I've just literally taken the function and I've subbed in the zero for Y. And if you remember, I always say the function is y, so, so y is equal to the modulus of x minus three, or in this one, y is equal to two. Bring him over and x is equal to three. Okay, so c is the point three zero. And d, at the same way I would write at the y-axis, x is equal to zero. So it's the same function that's cutting through that Y axis. So that's how I know it's the X minus three that I have to use. Okay, sub in my zero for X. Okay, that's what I'm naturally getting. Okay, put in your modulus symbols though, and you get three is equal to Y. Okay, so D is the point zero three. Okay, so I hope that one makes sense. You can see the minus three coming there from if we had just plotted X minus three. So that's the difference between the function X minus three and the function, the modulus of X minus three. Okay, part two then said, hence or otherwise solve the inequality, X minus three is less than two, okay? Um, 
So we did this a little bit when we when we found um, A and B, okay? Um, so you can see that the critical values we got there was one and five, okay? But you can also do this one graphically. So basically in, in English, if I could write this out in English, you're saying where is f of x less than g of x, okay? So if I can color in blue f of x, Can you see that that piece that I'm covering is when f of x is less than g of x, because that's g of x. So I didn't go above that. I literally just colored in the piece of, of f of x that's less than g of x. So therefore your answer to that is um, f of x is less than g of x when x lies between one and five. Okay, of course, nothing's stopping you. Let me just rub these pieces out. Nothing's stopping you doing something like this. Okay, if you didn't see that, and, and I figure an awful lot of people wouldn't see that. Nothing's stopping you squaring both sides. For example, x squared minus 6x plus 9 being less than 4. Bring him over. x squared minus 6x plus 5 being less than 0. Solving that, x is equal to 1, x is equal to 5, um, being your critical values. Okay, and then drawing that graph, okay. between one and five, yeah. Okay, I know it's a smiley face because my x squared is positive. So remember that equation is the exact same as this equation here. We've just rewritten it in a different format, that is all. Okay, um, where is that graph? Um, less than zero, well, it's less than zero in this case. Remember less than zero is below the line. So it's less than zero between one and five. So nothing's stopping you doing that method either here. It, it really is just a case of which method do you see and which way does your brain think or which way is your brain wired? If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.